How's it going there, folks? I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, still feeling a little bit under the weather, so my apologies for that. But this is the video review of the Hi-Fi Man EF2A desktop amplifier, which can be had for $169 from headdirect.com. Now, before we begin the review on this really sweet little amplifier, I do want to mention the last two giveaways and the winners for those respective giveaways. We have the Spigen Glass winners and we have the Phosphor Sport Watch Time winners. For the glass, we have Lil Simbu and Suspenser, who are the winners. Uh, there were 847 valid entries, and those were our two winners. And for the Phosphor Watches, we had 777 valid entries, and the winners were Nova to be and 1228 Maccabee. So for those four guys, you have 48 hours to get in touch with me via YouTube PM in order to claim your prize. Now, uh, we all spend hundreds of dollars on our headphones, or many of us do, um, even if it's just $120, you know, on something like the Audio-Technica ATH-M50 or the Shure SRH840. We spend so much money on our headphones, and we oftentimes forget that not all but the headphones matter. There's a lot other uh, things that attribute to good sound other than just uh, the headphones. That was very poorly worded. But let's take, a, let's take an analogy of a Ferrari. Let's say I spend quarter of a million bucks on a Ferrari, and I limited it, I put it in valet mode so that it could go no faster than 40. That's what a lot of us do with our headphones. We'll spend 200 bucks on getting really killer headphones and we're limiting it, we're putting them in valet mode by running it just off our iPod or just off our MacBook. And only until we get something like a, um, like a headphone amplifier will we realize that it's capable of a whole lot more than what we're an, uh, utilizing it for. Um, a headphone is basically a tiny speaker and it needs an amp to run. So I get the question all the time, do I actually need one of these? Do I need a headphone amplifier? And if so, which one? And really it depends on the impedance of your cans, which is the resistive and reactivity that headphones, um, how should I say, it present. Uh, to an electrical load. And so as a general rule of thumb, and this this is kind of very, very generalized, but I usually say if you've spent $100 or more on your headphones, you should look into getting a headphone amplifier. Now, headphone amplifiers are scalable. If you spend $1,000 on headphones, you're not going to want this headphone amplifier. You're going to want one that's a lot nicer. Alternatively, if you've only spent $100 on a pair of headphones, you don't need to go out and buy a $700 amp. Uh, you kind of buy uh, for the headphones that you're using. Now, uh, you can measure the amplifier you need by the impedance of your headphones. Uh, and the impedance, like I stated earlier, is the resistance between the electrical load. This model, the EF2A, has a 300 ohm impedance. And so it technically can run most all headphones, except for the exception of uh, orthodynamic headphones like the Odyssey LCD2, like, um, oh, there, there's a bunch of other headphones, like the Hi-Fi Man series. Um, however, this will run pretty much any dynamic headphone with the exception of the HD 600, the 650, and the 800s pretty well. Um, obviously, you're going to see some uh, amazing improvement in headphones like the ATH-M50, the SRH 840, uh, the Cost Pro DJ100s even. Um, and I'm going to talk about the weaknesses and the strong suits of this actual amplifier. But I do want to let you know, for those of you that don't, because they, I know there are a lot of you that don't know exactly what an amplifier is and what it does. Okay. Now, this amplifier also features a DAC, which is a digital to analog converter. And that's why we have this USB port right here. Now, with this EF2A, you're going to get the unit itself, two stock tubes. You will get a Chinese adapter uh, to plug into your wall. And uh, it works. I mean, this thing is heavy because this does need a lot of power in order to run. And you get a really, really high quality USB cable, which is necessary to get the best sound. Now, Inside this, there is a DAC. Now, what a DAC does, it converts a digital signal, like USB, to an analog signal that you can output to your headphones. Now, it also has an analog, uh, or it also has an analog input, but it's not great because it's not um, SPDIF, it's not coaxial, it's not uh, optical, it's just your standard RCA left and right. So, I noticed that I was getting a much better sound out of this USB DAC. Now, the DAC in here is a Burr Brown PCM2702, which is a decent DAC. It's not great. Um, it's only capable of 16-bit sound, but it's a lot better than RCA. Now, out of the box, this thing sounded weak because I actually ended up having a defective unit, and that was one thing that I think Hi-Fi Man, as much as I like them, uh, have a problem with, and that's quality control. 
So I told them about the problem I was having. They were quick to send me a new unit and I got everything in due time and I've been using this several months with no problems. However, that is something worth noting. But even the second model uh, took a very, very long time to get good sound. It took a couple days um, and about 100 hours of burn-in before I felt like this started to sound really good. These tubes, uh, which are stock Chinese tubes, take quite a long time to burn in. And, uh, you know, they do burn in eventually. And I would say that the sound even kept changing through uh, two to 300 hours. And I've used this for probably a couple thousand hours now. But for the first several hundred hours, it was ever changing. And so that's why I've waited so many months to do the review because I wanted to make sure that it had finally stabilized, that it hadn't moved. And I think we're to that point. And as you can see, it's a beautiful unit. It has this uh, brushed aluminum face here, and it has uh, it's made of all aluminum, which is really, really nice, uh, something you don't see in a cheaper uh, headphone amplifier. Of course, you have this acrylic plate up top, which also looks really cool because you can see all the components and sexy going on inside here, uh, which is totally awesome. Uh, but of course, what you're going to want to know in this is the sound quality. You know, how does this sound, uh, especially for the larger footprint of uh, this $170 DAC? Usually you find DACs under 250 bucks and they're tiny. This thing is not. And that's partially because it's not solid state. It is a tube amplifier, but it also has a lot of components in there that help make it a better sound. Sound. Now, I'm going to talk about it right now. Uh, like I stated, after about 300 hours of use, it finally settled in. And out of the box, it sounded weak. But after it had settled in, there was a lot of sparkle up top. Nothing fatiguing, though. I mean, I was never like, wow, that's kind of overwhelming. There is a lot of treble, and there's a lot of mids. Uh, the clarity in the mids is really, really nice. It's nice richness. It's not overbearing, but I really, really like it. I wish there was a little bit more mid-range than there is, but it's pretty close to just how I want it. And the bass isn't super punchy, but it holds its own, which is exactly how I like my sound. So the sound for me is really, really Really good. I think the uh, you know the dynamics in this are pretty much close to any other dual combo in this price range. Now you will find a better DAC for a little bit less, and you will find a better amp for a little bit less. For something that's a desktop uh, built-in DAC and amp combo, this is about as good as it gets. Um, Soundstage is all right, it's not great, um, but the EF2A adds a ton of depth. This thing uh, makes it so much stronger and so much more refined and it's a lot more clear. I wish it was a little bit more transparent with better vocal and instrument separation, but the actual range of the sound was really, really nice. One thing I do wanna complain about is the channel impedance, okay? Now I've pretty much always left this at eight o'clock because if you don't, there's a severe left to right channel imbalance that I've noticed, uh, more so in the left than in the right. But once I turned it up to this, uh, it gets really, really gain hungry about right here. From here to here, there's not much gain difference, but from here to here is exponential. And, you know, it gets really, really loud at nine o'clock, which is kind of a problem because it gets really gain hungry. But at the same time, that's the only place it kind of equalizes that imbalance. So that's something I noticed, something I wish would be changed, and certainly a downside of the EF2A. Now, my final review on this is going to be somewhat snazzy. Uh, it's going to be an excellent buy for someone who's an ATH M50 owner, an SRH840 owner, a uh, Cost uh, Pro DJ100 owner, an AKG K701 owner. Uh, I mean, it really is. It's awesome. If you have a pair of $150 headphones that I mentioned, and you're interested to see if you can take those headphones further, this will do it for for you and this is probably the best dual DAC and amp combo you can buy for 170 bucks. If you do have IEMs, this is probably a little bit overkill and it adds a little too much noise and hiss because of the tubes. I would get something solid state uh, and portable if I was using an IEM. And for heavy headphones like the 650, although this does run it, it doesn't seem quite there and I wish this added a little bit more pump. So my final review is somewhat snazzy. It's gonna be perfect for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, it's not going to quite hit their marks. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.